At this point, we've talked a lot about email. There are a couple of more things we should mention, though, before we finish up. There are lots of different ways to communicate using technology. A long time ago, people had to simply talk to each other or write letters. Today, most 13-year-olds communicate using text messages. Text messages allow you to communicate via short messages to your family and friends. Text messaging is also typically pretty informal. Most people don't like to share their phone numbers with lots of people. If everyone had your phone number, you would probably be sent a lot of spam, like all the time. Email is a way of communicating that is much more formal, and it can be more easily filtered when you get all that spam stuff. It would be weird for most students to text message their teacher. If you wanted to communicate with your teacher, how would you do so if you didn't want to do it through text messages? Well, email makes a lot of sense. If you wanted to communicate with your school's principal or your state's governor, you wouldn't send a text message either. Email, on the other hand, is an excellent choice when sending messages to people you don't know very well. Because email is more formal, it's important that we use certain standards when we write. When sending a text message, you might use shortened word forms like BRB for Be Right Back or LOL for Laugh Out Loud. You probably also use lots of emojis, pictures, and memes. Now, you can send memes and pictures and emojis through email too, but typically you want your email to be formatted more like a letter. An email should have complete sentences. A sentence can be roughly defined as a complete thought that starts with a capital letter and ends with a period. You want to make sure things are spelled correctly. You also typically want to put things into paragraphs. Emails are often longer than text messages, so it's important to keep them organized. You should also end the email by signing your name. Here's an example of a poorly formatted email Ricardo sent his teacher. My grade sucks. Please fix. My mom is mad. What should I do? You may notice a couple of things at first. Spelling and punctuation are not good. There are no capital letters. There is no detail. The student does not even leave his name nor does the student address the teacher professionally. Someday, you might want help with your grade. You might be in high school or college. Perhaps you want to get a job and you want to send an email to the head of the company to hire you. If you make your email like this bad example by Ricardo, you will almost certainly not get that job and you might not get the help you need in class. So, let's fix this. My grade sucks, please fix. My mom is mad, what should I do? First, let's add a quick opener. If it was to me, you might say, Mr. Pettit, I hope you are doing well. Now, time to fix the mess. First, let's start a new paragraph. Now, let's capitalize the M. Let's make sure that sucks is spelled right. Better yet, let's use a more professional word. Let's say, I am worried about my grades. Then, let's delete the part about mom being mad. That is unimportant in this situation. Next, we need to give a little more detail. Let's say, I turned in our last assignment on Thursday, but I'm worried you didn't get it. I can't find a score for it on Gradebook. Let's add even more detail. I also had a hard time with test two. Would it be possible for me to retake it? That would be amazing. Please let me know what I can do. Thank you. Even if you don't really have anything to thank them for, it's usually a good idea to say thank you at the end of your email. Now, let's compare these two emails. My grade sucks, please fix. My mom is mad, what should I do? Mr. Pettit, I hope you are doing well. I am worried about my grades. I turned in our last assignment on Thursday, but I'm worried you didn't get it. I can't find a score for it on Gradebook. I also had a hard time with test two. Would it be possible for me to retake it? That would be amazing. Please let me know what I can do. Thank you. Can you see the difference? The second email is still short, but it has complete sentences, valuable detail, and is much more likely to get a teacher to take you seriously. Oh, we forgot one thing. We need to put our name at the end. Hit the return key a couple of times and sign it. Remember to include your first and last name, Ricardo Gomez. For your assignment today, 
please copy the text in this Canvas page, put it in an email, and fix it. Add details if you need to. It's okay to make it up. Make sure everything is spelled correctly. Make sure you sign it with your first and last name. Make sure that each sentence is a complete thought and that it starts with a capital letter and that it ends with some sort of punctuation, usually a period. Send your email to either Mr. Pettit or Mr. Kendall, whoever your teacher is. <laughs> Good luck.